All right, so first of all, understand what restriction enzymes are. These are enzymes that are going to cut DNA molecule at very specific sequences. We also call them restriction endonucleases because they can break down a nucleic acid, which DNA is. So now also think about it. Why would we want to cut the DNA molecule into fragments? because DNA molecules are usually very long, so it would be very inconvenient to work with really, really big pieces. So we need to be able to manage that in a better way by getting these smaller pieces. Maybe we want to get specific genes and so on so that we can study them. So DNA is going to be cut at very precise locations, and we call these locations restriction sites. So that's where the specific restriction enzymes are going to cleave the DNA. And those sequences are going to be unique in a way that they are going to be read in the same or they read in the same way. So if you go from five to three direction, you're going to see the pattern of the nucleotides, the basis is going to be exactly the same. So for example, we have a sequence here, GAATTC. And then if we read the other strand from 5 to 3 direction is going to be exactly the same. So we have GAATTC. So because of that, we call these restriction sites palindromic sites. So now, where do we actually get these restriction enzymes from? They, they are purified from bacteria, and bacteria typically use these restriction uh, enzymes as their immune system because when bacteriophages inject the DNA, viral DNA, the restriction enzymes are going to recognize the, the DNA as foreign and they're going to cut it up so that way we, they can neutralize the, the viral effect on bacteria. So um, there's a large number of restriction enzymes that we already have and uh, the way we assign the names is based on which bacteria restriction enzyme was purified from. So for example, um, HIND3, you can see we have Roman numerals here, um, it comes from Haemophilus influenza bacteria. So we'll have the scientific name and then an abbreviation for a specific restriction enzyme. So the way restriction enzymes cut the DNA is also unique. They can produce what we call sticky ends. So this is where we get the single-stranded overhang. Notice that if there is an enzyme, restriction enzyme, that was purified from E. coli, so we're going to call that E. core R1, um, the cut will be made with, between the G and A, so that's right here, and then also on the other strand, which is going to be right here. And then the hydrogen bonds are going to be broken between these bases. So this is what I'm talking about when I say, here, here you go, that single-stranded overhang. And um, those sticky ends are actually going to be very helpful when we try to generate recombinant DNA molecule, when we try to combine DNA from different sources to produce a transgenic organism. Um, Restriction enzymes can also cut in a simple way where they cut straight across the DNA molecule, so producing these blunt ends of, of the strand. Okay, so let me give you an example of how we can um, how we can cut the DNA using different restriction enzymes. So enzyme number one, notice, is going to provide the blunt ends. You can see where the cut is going to occur. So the enzyme scans the DNA, basically looks for the pattern, looks for the sequence, and that's where it's going to cut it. So you can see I already highlighted some of the parts. So we have GTA, GTAC here. So we're going to cut between T and A. So there you go, blunt end. And then another enzyme is going to recognize the sequence CCATGG, and then we read that backwards, same, same way, CCATGG. So we're going to cut that in a staggered way, producing the sticky end. So the first cut is going to be right here, and then right here, and then we break the hydrogen bond. So we're making the sticky ends.
So now the question is, so how many fragments do we have from this digest? So let's say this DNA, this linear DNA is, a, it is, is, a, is in a test tube and we've added two enzymes, one and two. Um, we are going to get three fragments total. Do you see how we get that? So this right here is fragment number one. This right here is fragment number two. And this is going to be your fragment number three. So now what we would normally do, we would run gel electrophoresis to determine the sizes of these fragments. So you would have a marker in one lane, which would be right here. These are known DNA sizes of fragments. So I'm gonna go ahead and um, label this really quick. So I'll say this is two, four, six, eight, 10, 12, 14, 16, 18, and 20. So this is obviously a very small DNA molecule. And um, my markers will be, let's say right here, right here, right here. These are known fragments that we have, that we use and we load them as we run the gel electrophoresis on the um, fragments that we're trying to find out the size. So, so the very first fragment, we would run it and we would see that it's actually the shortest fragment. So it would be somewhere closest to the positive end of the gel. Because remember, <clears throat> excuse me, the well area is the negative end. So, and then the positive is here and then DNA is going to migrate to the positive end. The smallest pieces are going to move fastest. So, so that's how we're going to sort the DNA by size, DNA fragments by size. So now um, what we want to do here from the given DNA molecule, I could ask you to say, okay, so how many fragments do you get here from this digest and what are the, what are the sizes of these fragments? So yes, generally you would run the, the, the fragments through gel and you would see exactly where they match up. So for example, if you see the band is right here and another band is right here, you would know, okay, it's 14 base pairs or maybe it's 10 base pairs. So in this case, instead of doing that, I am going to ask you to count the base pairs that you see in each fragment. So the very first fragment that we have, notice, is this one. So we say, how many base pairs do we have? So all we have to do is just count the base pairs. So we have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Nine base pairs. And then the second fragment is this one. So let's go ahead and count that. So this is one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, and 10. So second fragment is gonna give us 10 base pairs but then notice we have that overhang single strand so we have one two three four so we can just put four single strand and then or we can ignore it because it's really so small i'm just looking for the base pairs um and then third fragment is going to be one two three four five six seven eight nine ten eleven twelve thirteen 14 base pairs and the same thing we have that overhang which we can ignore so now so these are the the sizes of the fragments so if you ran the gel where would you see the bands on the gel so fragment that's made up of nine base pairs would be sitting right here in between 10 and 8 fragment that has 10 base pairs would be sitting right here at the 10 and then fragment that has 14 base pairs would be sitting right here so you can see we sorted those fragments by size and that is the purpose of gel electrophoresis okay so this is what you should be able to do. So I, it looks like um, quite a lot of you had trouble cutting the actual DNA, understanding where the, the cut and how the cut needs to occur. So hope this helps.